Hello techies! Welcome to our brand new video series focused on helping you get the most of your experiences in life. Before we start the video, let's know about Uptalk. Uptalk is a live, interactive platform for software training, furnishing robust personalities who could take on universal business platforms. One is initiated as a standalone process, and then it goes for approval to the HR admin, and then there is an integration that is configured, although it is not configured completely because there are some errors. So it must have a redirect, it must have an integration, etc., etc. So this is the basic that has been created for you, right? This is already there for you. So if you want to change, if you want to update, etc., you will configure this existing business process definition right. But what is the other use of default definition? The default definition is like, if you are creating a configuration as per your own requirements, as per your organization's requirements, you will do the create, copy, or link right. You use that option. Create, copy, or link. Business process definition. So you can use that. If you use a create, copy, or link definition, that means you are creating a version of the business process definition specific to this organization and its subordinates. What is the organization? XYZ Motors right. So if you are creating, copying, or linking, that means you are creating an own customized version for XYZ Motors. If you do not do that, if you do not create a copy or a link of a business process definition, then it will use the default definition, OK. If you do not create a copy of the link or another instance, it will use the default definition. Like there is a saying in Hindi, people who don't have anybody, they have somebody in the God or the Almighty to take care of them, right? This default definition is that the Almighty. If you do not have a specific definition for your supervisory organization, then it will use the default definition for that particular business process, I mean for that particular object. Okay. So, and the default definition is configured initially during the WD setup, or you can also go there, and you can configure as per your requirements. A lot of organizations use this concept. They will not create separate business process definitions for each organization. They would rather configure the business process definition as the default definition right. Then what happens? Every single organization will use that definition. Every organization, meaning every single supervisory organization, will use that definition. That makes it very consistent and very streamlined across the entire enterprise right. You may choose to do that. A lot of organizations do not create specific copies. They will update the default definition and put in everything in that, okay. But we will not do that. We are creating this for our practice. We are creating this for our learning. So we have created our own copy. So let's go to our higher business process definition. So you search for hire, and you see that we have created a specific business process for XYZ Motors. So it says, hire for XYZ Motors organization right. This is a higher business process. Now let me show you just one quick thing. If I go to the subordinate of XYZ Motors, let's say I go to executive right. What is the business process definition for executive? 
So again, the same way I go to the related actions, I go to business process and business process definitions for business object. Okay. And if I click on the hire, you see it still says hire for 1001 XYZ Motors. Why is that? We have created this for our supervisory organization. This is also a supervisory organization. 1002 XYZ Motors Executive is also a supervisory organization. Superior organization. Superior organization, right? So then, what happens to this business process definition? Why is it still showing up here? It is inherited. It is inherited, right? It will be inherited for all subordinates until you create a separate definition for this particular subordinate organization. Until and unless you do that, it will inherit from the superior organization right. So bottom line is, you don't have to create separate business processes for each and every supervisory organization, right? Not needed. You create it for the top-level organization, and that is it. You are done. So let's go to this business process definition. The hire for 1001 WWXYZ Motors, and just review it once. So let's see what are the different steps that we have in this particular business process definition. So I'm trying to open it. So there are two steps as of now, right? One is the initiation. One is the action. Right. So we will add more steps to this particular business process. Now let's go to the related actions and business process. Edit definition. OK. I'm going to edit the definition for this particular business process. All right, now comes the question. What will be the effective date of this change? Today or tomorrow? Today or tomorrow? Is it tomorrow or can I put any future date? Today? Can I put a today's date is fine, right? Today's date is 6th of April, as per the system time. So today's date is fine. Can I put yesterday's date? No, not possible. Today's date or future. Today's date or future date. Let's say I don't believe that I want to create a past effective date. 1st of April. Oops. Immediately, it says, enter an effective date. Okay, it gave me a warning right. It says, enter an effective date that's not in the past. Okay. You can't submit changes to the business process definition when an event is already in progress. So that clearly tells me, hey, stop right. Do not do that. So we have to use today's date. So let's go here and use today's date. Well, Workday is happy. Click OK. Now let's see if it is opening in the edit mode. Yeah, so now I want to add a step between A and B. I want a step. So what should I do? What can be the sequence? 
What can be the order? I can be a good order. Yes, you see the every step I add. It adds it at the top right. There is no plus icon for each row. Unlike what we have seen for conditional logic, conditional rules, eligibility rules, we don't have this plus or add row icon for each row. So we have to be very careful with the order. The value that we put in for the order. Okay, so if I put something as AA after I save it, it will fall. I mean it will align itself in between A and B right. But for the time being it will show up at the top. Okay, so let's say I want to insert an approval kind of step and the manager is going to do the approval. So I have put in the order. The type of the step is what? Approval. Approval right. Please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. For more information, contact us at sales at the rateuptalk.com.